back. Uh, in the last lecture we discussed in detail about uh, one of the important methods uh, which is considered as a decision procedure method which is called as a truth table method. Truth table method is considered to be the most simplistic method especially in this uh, course introduction to logic. It is uh, simplistic in the sense that uh, as long as the number of propositional variables are less in number that means 2 or 3. For example if you have 2 uh, propositional variables you have 4 entries in your truth table and if you have 3 uh, propositional variables like P, Q, R etc representing some kind of propositions we have 8 entries in the truth table. But the problem is, is that it is very difficult for us to manage uh, for example when you have more than 5 or 6 variables propositional variables. If you have 6 variables that means 2 to the power of n entries will be there in the truth table that means 2 to the power of 6 maybe 64 entries you need to inspect to find out whether a group of statements are consistent or whether uh, a particular kind of uh, conclusion follows from the premises that means the validity etc. For that you know you need to check all the 64 entries you know that means you need to inspect each and row each and every row of your truth table meticulously that means 64 rows are there and all the rows you need to inspect uh, I mean uh, those rows in which whether or not you have true premises and a false conclusion. If you have a true premise and a false conclusion then the argument is obviously considered to be invalid. So instead of inspecting these 64 rows which will be difficult for us and there are some other better methods uh, one such method which we will be discussing in this class that is semantic tablux method. So this is also called as analytic tablux method or it is also called as tree method they are one of the same. So this uh, tree method is a very 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 useful kind of method which is originated in the works of uh, a famous logician Beth B E T H in the year 1955 Beth lived from 1908 to 1908 to 1964 he is considered to be a Dutch philosopher and uh, in the history of logic it, it seems that this uh, method has originated in the works of Beth. Later Raymond Smullyan has formulated in his book first order logic. Uh, his own trees and all uh, which is uh, little bit simpler than what Beth has proposed in his uh, analytic tablox method. So then simultaneously around the same year uh, Hintika also developed independently the same kind of uh, method. It seems that uh, somehow Hintika uh, seems to have proposed this method around the same year uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, no evidence that uh, uh, whether, whether or not uh, Raymond Smullyan has borrowed something from Hintika. So there is a controversy or debate uh, in who, who has actually formulated this method first. So that is not of interest to us but uh, what is of interest uh, to us is to understand this particular kind of method especially in understanding uh, in, uh, in understanding the validity of a given formulas or when two groups of statements are consistent to each other or one can even show whether a given well formed formula is a tautology or a contradiction or a contingent statement using this tabula method uh, and you can also show when two logical formula uh, two well formed formulas are logically equivalent to each other using the same uh, kind of method that is semantic tablux method. So it has its applications in automate, automated theorem proving and uh, it is also applications in uh, the logic of programs etc and all which we will not go into the details of these things but we will try to introduce uh, what we what exactly this method is all about uh, we will introduce this method and then we will try to show uh, with some examples that uh, given group of statements are consistent to whether or not they are consistent to each other or when a conclusion follows from the premises that means the question uh, that is the validity of a given argument etc. So uh, what is a semantic tree before we begin uh, it is also a kind of constructive method. So what we will be doing is given a well formed formula we will be constructing a corresponding tree diagram for this particular kind of thing. Usually trees will have trunks and you have leaves etc and branches etc. So the same way we have uh, we usually uh, here in this case we have upside down kind of tree usually trees will be down and then up up we will have branches etc and all but here we have some kind of upside down kind of tree uh, which you will find it here for each and every formula you will be constructing a corresponding tree and then we will try to evaluate whether the fall following formula is a tautology etc. 
So, a semantic tree is considered to be a device for displaying all the valuations on which the formula or set of formulas are going to be true. So, one of the basic and important the essence of this method is this uh, that you know we will be constructing some kind of counter example. So, uh, the essence of this one is uh, like this it, it consists of finding some kind of counter examples where what is considered to be a counter example uh, suppose if uh, an argument is considered to be invalid especially when your premises are true and the conclusion is false. So, if you can construct one kind of one particular kind of counter example in which your premises are true and the conclusion is false then obviously the argument is invalid. So, that means you have we are said to have constructed a counter example. So, the basic idea of this method is this that an inference is considered to be valid if and only if there exists there exists a counter example otherwise the inference is going to be valid if and only if there are no counter examples. So, that is there is no situation in which the premises hold and the conclusion is false. So, this also involves some kind of rule based construction which we are going to talk about in a while from now and using those rules we will construct trees and then we are going to show that if there are no counter examples then obviously the formula is going to be valid otherwise if there are any uh, counter examples we could construct a counter example then obviously the argument is considered to be invalid. So, each step of the construction is given in account of uh, some kind of tree like structure which is also called as a tabla. So, usually this uh, tabla closes when there is a conflicting information conflicting information in the sense that suppose if you have a formula x and not x then obviously the branch closes because you have a conflicting information. Suppose if you have some information like uh, it is raining and simultaneously you say that it is not raining then that is a conflicting kind of information which one to believe you will be in some kind of dilemma. So, it is in you are in conflict. So, in that case the branch closes a literal and its negation appears in a branch then obviously the tree closes uh, that particular branch closes. So, no counter examples can be constructed for a uh, if the branch is not open. So, if the, uh, the branch is closed that means it implies that there are no counter examples exist. So, now this uh, tree method is based on some kind of uh, rules. So, now what we will be doing in another 20 to 25 minutes is this that uh, we will be talking about these rules and then we will construct uh, this uh, tree diagrams for various kinds of well formed formulas then we are going to show that when a given well formed formula is a tautology contradiction or contingent statement and second we will talk about when a given well formed formula is a tautology and third where we will talk about when two groups of statements are inconsistent to each other and fourth we will talk about uh, when two groups of statements are or two well formed formulas are considered to be logically equivalent to each other. So, all these things which we will be trying to talk about in terms of this particular kind of semantic tablux method and then in the process we will also be trying to talk about some of the important strategies that we will be following uh, while adopting this particular kind of method. So, the rules are like this uh, first to begin with we have prepositional variables etcetera p q r s etcetera. So, these are all prepositional variables and then we have these symbols one which is always true is represented in this way usually with the symbol t and then this is represented as bot one is always something which is always false is represented in this way. And then we have some other things like parentheses etcetera and all and apart from that you have this logical connectives negation or and implies and if and only if. And then the other symbol which we will be using is this one that means the when the branch closes we will put this mark and all cross mark. So, that means the branch closes and all. So, now uh, what we are trying to do simply is, is that uh, so we will be assigning some kind of truth values to these prepositional variables that means we are interpreting this formulas. So, now there are uh, some kind of uh, rules which we need to understand before applying this uh, semantic tablux method. So, to begin with uh, so there are something called uh, root 
root and then nodes. So, you need to understand this thing little bit later we will talk about this thing little bit later. So, first we will talk about some kind of uh, rules with which you know you can say whether a given formula is uh, valid or not these are the construction tree construction rules. So, suppose if you come across uh, a simple formula like this negation of p then you simply write it like this only the construction of this not p is same as this one. So, now if you have a formula like this p r q the construction tree for this one is p r q. So, now if you have a, for a compound formula p and q then the construction tree will be like this. So, usually a, a tree will be like this. So, these are all the branches and this is considered to be the root and all. So, this is the formula that we are trying to begin with and now this formula is reduced uh, reduced into some kind of atomic propositions and all as you will see in all these uh, rules uh, uh, the things which are there at the nodes are considered to be only atomic sentences as a p or q or maybe negation of that one etcetera. So, whenever you have a formula p and q you just write it like this it is a trunk uh, it is an upside down kind of tree usually the tree will be like this now you have to reverse it a little bit and then you will see these things. So, now p implies q so the definition of p implies q is not p or q so that means it is not p or q. So, the branch suggests that there is a disjunction. So, that is either not P or Q. So, this is exactly in alliance with the, the semantics that we have talked about in the last few classes. So, that means P or Q is going to be false only when both P or Q are false in all other cases it is going to be true in the same way P and Q is going to be true only when P Q's are true in all other cases it is going to be false. So, that is the semantics of proposition logic. In the same way P implies Q is going to be false only when P is T and Q is false in all other cases it is going to be true. So, based on that kind of information we are just trying to come up with some kind of constructive method and then what we are trying to do is for simple formulas like this we are trying to construct trees tree diagrams usually a picture says 1000 words. So, a given a formula we are trying to construct trees like this. So, now this is called as a branch and this is called as a trunk of a tree etcetera. So, now the only logical connective which is left now here is this one. So, we will write it here p if and only if q. So, this is either p q is the case or not p not q you can write not p not q here itself p and q can shift it to the other side it does not make any big difference it is one of the same. So, these are the rules which we have for each and every logical connective for not this is a thing for or the tree appears to be like this for p and q it appears to be like this. So, these are considered to be alpha rules. So, now in this alpha rules so there are some rules which are considered to be branching rules that means wherever you find a branch this is considered to be a branching rule and wherever you do not find the branching kind of thing is called as non branching rules you know. So, why we are talking about branching and non branching rules because so while adopting this particular kind of technique or method. So, there are some kind of strategies that one will be following. So, the one one of the important strategies is this that always apply non branching rules first. So, once you exhaust with the non branching rules you enter into branching rules. So, now so these are this is non branching rule it is not leading into any branch. So, non branching rule and all. So, now all these things are branching kind of rules and all. So, given uh, uh, suppose if you are supposed to apply this method you have to ensure that first you apply the non branching rule and then apply all these rules and all. So, now this list is called as uh, alpha rules usually it is uh, considered to be positive kind of rules and all. So, now we will be writing beta rules and all. So, beta rules are exactly the negations of these things. So, now if you come across a formula like this that is negation of negation of p it is it is not the case that it is not the case that it is raining that means it is raining. 
So now if you have a formula like this you simply substitute it with this particular kind of formula P. So now using De Morgan's laws it's quite simple so now negation of P and P are Q if you push this negation inside then it will become negation of P and the negation of disjunction will become conjunction so that is why we need to write it in this format. So now as you clearly see this is, an, this is a formula and then once you apply this uh, rules and all at the end you will find only atomic propositions what is an atomic proposition an atomic proposition is a one which, which cannot be further reduced into any other kind of proposition P or Q's can be reduced into P Q etc and all but P Q's R etc they are all propositional variables they are the most simplistic kind of sentences which cannot be further reduced into other thing so that is why they are called as atomic sentences so now this is the rule for this one negation of P and Q in the same way negation of P and Q using the De Morgan's law it leads to a branch it is negation if you push it inside it becomes negation of P and negation of conjunction will become disjunction that is why disjunction will always have a branch so this is the form that we have so now negation of P implies Q is simply P and not Q why because P, P implies Q is not P or Q and negation of not P or Q is not not P that is P and not Q so now negation of P implies Q is a branch again P and not Q and not Q, not P and Q so these are the only things that we have these are the rules which we will be applying for judging whether a given well formed formula is a tautology whether it is a contradiction or contingent statement on the one hand or when two groups of statements are consistent to each other etc. So now using these rules we will be trying to talk about whether or not given formula is valid or invalid etc. So now to start with we start with some simple examples so we want to see whether this particular kind of argument is valid or not we start with some simple examples in the beginning and then we will move on to some other things usually when you write uh, P implies Q Q implies R P implies R then usually you say that it is a valid argument you know. by virtue of transitive property obviously you know P implies Q Q implies R and obviously P implies R so now let us uh, do not we do not talk about the valid argument obviously valid arguments which we know so instead of this what we do is we slightly change this thing P implies Q Q instead of this thing R implies Q and then P implies R let us assume that this is the whether or not this P implies R follows from these two things or not so now these two are considered to be usually premises and this is usually called as conclusion so now how do we know that P implies R follows from these two statements P implies Q and R implies Q whether it is it follows then it is valid otherwise it is invalid so how do we check that this particular kind of formula that is P implies R follows from these two things there are various methods one method which we have already discussed that is the truth table method and since there are three variables eight entries will be there in the truth table so that is also a little bit easy to do but uh, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to see whether P in place or follows from this or not so now the very essence of semantic tablax method is is that uh, we are trying to construct a counter example if you fail to construct a counter example that means the original uh, uh, conclusion is going to be valid so what we will be doing is we will begin with the same thing we will list out these things P in place Q and R in place Q so these are premises and we have a conclusion P in place R so now what we will be doing is we will be negating the conclusion so the idea here is is that negation of the conclusion leads to the closure of branch that means it is unsatisfiable then obviously 
uh, your negation of conclusion is going to be false that means all the branch closes it is going to be false that means x has to be a tautology if x is a tautology obviously the formula is going to be valid because all tautologies are considered to be valid formulas. So now we are trying to check whether P in place R follows from these two or not it is denial of conclusion that means we denied the conclusion and all and we are trying to construct a counter example if we fail in the process then obviously this is the actual conclusion which we uh, that follows. So now so now, so now uh, these are the compound formulas and all so now we will be applying alpha beta rules etc. So now one of the important strategies is, is that we need to apply non branching rules first. So which uh, formula you take into consideration is uh, come under non branching rules non branching rules are this is the one and then of course uh, this is another one. So these are the two non branching rules that you are finding because there is no branch here there is only trunk trunk of a tree. So now this looks like uh, this one not of P implies Q so instead of Q you have R so now this reduces to P and not R so this is 3 simplification 3 is this formula and we simplified it then this leads to this one. So we applied uh, beta rule here beta rule is talking about the negation of this formula so now this is the one. So now once you apply this particular kind of rule you need to see whether there is any conflicting information in your uh, branch in your tree. So right now we do not have since we have checked this formula then we put this tick mark so that you know you will not use it again and again otherwise you will confuse and we will use it again. So once it got exhausted then you put a check mark here that means you do not have to use this one again. So now these are the formulas which are left. So now we use this particular kind of thing P implies Q that means uh, you apply this tree you constructing a tree for this one means you have to use this thing so it is not P or Q. So you draw a diagram like this under this you put not P and Q you need to pause a second and you need to see whether there is any conflicting information in your in your branch. So now this branch is going like this all the way till here it is a trunk and this is a branch now now this is going like this so one is going like this another one another branch is like this so now you have p here and you have not p here so that means there is a conflicting information so the branch closes here itself that means it stops there itself there is no question of any uh, construction of any counter example possible here in this case since you have conflicting information that is a contradictory information it closes. So now this branch is still open and all so now since this is a formula that we checked out already so that is why we, we had put tick mark here. So now what is the formula which is left here is this one R implies Q. So now again apply the same rule alpha rule and it becomes not R and Q. So now this is also over now we checked out checked all the formulas and all and then obviously at the end of all the branches and all you have only atomic propositions not a q etc and all. So now you have to inspect this particular kind of branch so now this branch is open and even this branch is also open that means even after the denial of the conclusion we could still construct a counter example that satisfies this formula and all that means it is possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false that is the reason why we have at least one or two open branches. So now we can study this open branches and we can talk about this particular kind of thing. So now not R means R is false that means not R is true that means R has to be free and all false sorry and Q is true Q is T and then of course not R we have taken into consideration and P T. So that means assigning these values R false Q 
QT and PT this satisfies this particular kind of formula this particular kind of formula that means P implies Q R implies Q not P implies R this is an assignment which said which makes this formula true and all open branch means satisfiability and all. So this is going to make these formulas true. So this is one model uh, which we have that means uh, whenever you give R F Q T and P T that satisfies this particular kind of formula what is satisfying this formula that means if you have true premises and a false conclusion that means this is a counter example for this one and another counter example is there here whenever Q takes value T that means Q T R uh, false not R is true means R is false and then P T. So this is another counter example in all. So what is that we have achieved with this particular kind of thing denial of the conclusion does not lead to branch closure that means you are already said to have constructed a counter example whenever you are said to have constructed a counter example then obviously the argument is invalid. So it is possible that your premises are true but yet your conclusion is false how the conclusion is going to be false it is going to be false in two different ways these two different ways are considered to be the two different open branches. So especially when R is F Q is T P is T that is going to make this thing true and when Q is T R is equal to F P is equal to T then also your premises are true and the conclusion is false even if at least one branch is open by denying the conclusion then obviously the argument is considered to be invalid. So this is based on some kind of falsifiability kind of method now instead of looking for things which are true you will be looking for things which are false that means you are looking for always you are looking for a counter example. So it is like uh, you have 100 uh, uh, for example in a bag which consists of 100 tomatoes uh, even if you have one rotten tomato and all you will say that not all tomatoes are considered to be good in this basket one tomato will spoil the entire thing and all. So this is based on some kind of falsifiability kind of method as long as it is not falsifiable the formula is going to be true it is like as long as you do not find a white crow it is going you are, you are going to accept it as a statement that you know you are going to accept the statement that all crows are going to are going to be black. So now this is the way to show that this argument is invalid so what about some of the arguments which are valid we will take up some kind of arguments which are obviously valid so this is the one P implies Q and P and Q this is obviously the modus ponens rule which is considered to be obviously valid so how do we show that this Q follows from these two things P implies Q and P etc you list out this premises as it is these are premises and then what you do here is you negate the conclusion so now you need to write here denial of conclusion so now once you deny the conclusion we need to check whether it leads to the closure of a branch or not so now we need to apply this alpha or beta rules depending upon this thing there are no branching rule non branching rule which we can apply here so any rule which you can use so now we need to apply this one this is already an atomic sentence nothing needs to be done so now P implies Q is simply not P or Q so now you have P here and you have not P here this branch closes and not Q and Q here so conflicting information this branch also closes so what did we get negation of the conclusion leads to the closure of a branch that means it is false usually represent it as this one bot this is a symbol that we use here so that means x has to be obviously true since x is, a, x is true means x is a tautology x is a tautology means it is a valid formula all tautologies in propositional logics are obviously all valid formulas that is the reason why logicians will be insisting on tautologies there are, sub, there are special kinds of statements which are obviously are always considered to be true they are like God given kind of truths which are always true and there are some other groups of statements group of formulas which are obviously false it is like 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 which is obviously false and 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 is always true so now this is the way which you can show 
the validity of a given formula. For validity what you need to do is you have to deny the conclusion and then you need to see whether the branch closes or not all the branches closes or not. If at least one branch is open that means the open branch is considered to be uh, it has to be analyzed in detail. So that means open branch indicates us that there is a counter example uh, what is a counter example you have true premises and a false conclusion. So that is going to be the case if you can construct one counter example that means it is obviously going to be an invalid argument. So what else one can do with the help uh, with the help of this particular semantic tableaux method. So now we are trying to see whether a given a group of statements are consistent to each other or not. So for that what you will be doing is like this let us consider an example and we will try to see whether uh, this particular kind of group of statements are consistent to each other or not B and not B the first statement and the second statement is not K uh, some statements which does not matter whatever you take into consideration and 3 not B B R B implies not G forget about what this C is B is etc and all they all correspond to some kind of uh, uh, statement it can be it is raining or it may be something like that some kind of statements which it expresses and all. So now given English language sentences we have converted into the language of propositional logic and now we are going to see whether these are consistent to each other or not that means they simultaneously they can be true or not that is what you are trying to explore. So now here there is obviously there is no conclusion you not have to look into the negation of the conclusion and see the branch closes etc and all. So we will keep it as it is and all so now we are trying to find out a model in which uh, trying to interpret this formal this propositional variables that means assigning this some kind of values to it so that all these things will turn out to be true and all that means you need to inspect the open branches here. So now so as usual we need to apply non branching rules and all here there is no scope for any non branching rule and all. So we can open up any formula and then construct tree for these things. So now let us consider the second one you can choose the first one also. So this is not KRG so that is why we applied this particular kind of rule PRQ means either P is the case or Q is the case. So now this is over you tick mark this one now the second formula you can take any formula into consideration. So now we will open up the first one it is either C or B and not B and the same kind of information you need to pass it to the other branch also. So C and then B and not B so now this formula is also over. So now each time you apply this alpha beta rules etc you need to see whether any branch closes or not. So this branch remains open so now this you can write it in this way B and not B it can be written in that form of trunk and all that is B and not B. So this is also B and not B. So now you have a conflicting kind of information P and not B this branch closes and here also this branch closes now the branches that are open are these two. So now whatever has remained the formula needs to be applied to this uh, needs to be written just below this open branches. So now what is left now this is the one. So now this can be written as this is x and this is y and now x implies y is not x or y that means not of not b or b and not g remains the same thing and now this branch is these two branches are already closed you do not have to worry much. So now this is not b or b same information you put it in the all the open branches that you will see here. So now this is not g now you further simplify it using de Morgan's laws etc or maybe you can apply any one of these rules there then not of this one you push the negation inside this becomes b and then not of uh, negation of disjunction will become conjunction that is why we are writing one below the other. So this is like a uh, this formula and then this one and not g remains same and then this becomes b and not b not not b is b 
and not of disjunction is conjunction that is why we are writing just below this one and this is not B. So now all the things are exhausted so now we need to see this particular kind of thing you have B here and not B here this branch closes and C not K and all this branch remains open and this obviously closes because of conflicting information B and not B and then this branch also remains open open branches are the ones which you need to inspect so these are the branches that makes this formulas true that means each open branch will serve as a model some kind of int each branch is considered to be satisfiable you know. for example when you give when you assign value not k t that means k is false and c c as t and then not g as t means g is false under this particular kind of assignment of truth values these three statements are going to be satisfiable that means that are going to be true together in the same way another open branch that you will find it here in this tree diagram is this when you give valuation this is one kind of interpretation under which these formulas are going to be true together are satisfiable the other one is the one which you need to see not g is equal to t that means g is false the first one and then c is true if you assign some kind of true value t to c the only values that you can assign to c is either t or f and all so uh, and g is not g not g we already have this information and all so you have this particular kind of information that also satisfies this particular kind of formula and all so uh, these are the uh, things uh, interpretations which satisfies this formula that means these formulas are going to be consistent especially when you interpret in this particular kind of way so list out all the formulas one after another construct a tree diagram and you find any open branch and open branch corresponds to the satisfiability or consistency so that means the formulas can be true together especially when you have when you assign some kind of values like this so that means these three formulas are simultaneously said to be consistent to each other so this is another way of showing that these formulas are going to be consistent now suppose if you have used truth table method so now the number of variables are 1 2 3 4 4 and 4 variables are there that means there are 16 entries you need to inspect so that means each row leads to true and all so all the rows in the under the final column uh, whatever uh, value that you that means the value that you are going to get is t those rows you need to inspect so instead of doing all these things it is a most simplistic kind of method uh, is easy to use based on some simple kind of rules De Morgan's rules will help us so with the help of which we can easily see that you know here are these particular kinds of things which satisfies this formula that means under this particular kind of interpretation this is going to be true all the formulas are going to be true so now we can also show that the given formulas are considered to be inconsistent to each other so obviously these three formulas are said to be consistent for example if you have a formula p and q and not p or q i have written deliberately chosen this example just to show that these two formulas are inconsistent to each other so now first you state all these things list out these things with some numbers and then apply non branching rules first p and q is a non branching rule so that is why you apply this first and then you apply branching rules and all of course both are branching rules only so you don't have to worry much so any rule which you can apply so this is not p and not of disjunction is conjunction so this will become not q so now you will see here p and this negation is there so list out the premises first or this list out these formulas and then construct a tree if all the branches closes then that is said to be unsatisfiable or it is also called as inconsistent so p and q is inconsistent with not p and q that is obviously the case because p and q is exactly 
not P R Q not of P R Q is a contradictory to P and Q and all obviously two statements which are in contradictory to each other are always inconsistent and all are unsatisfiable. So this is the way in which you can show that given formula uh, formulas are uh, consistent or inconsistent to each other or satisfiable and all. So now there are other things which you can do with the help of this uh, semantic tablox method. So that is uh, you can show whether uh, given formulas are logically identical to each other and later we will see uh, whether uh, this is going to be uh, statement is going to be tautology or not that also one can do with the help of semantic tablox method. So now we are trying to see whether so these are the two formulas now we are trying to see whether they are logically identical to each other or not. P implies Q implies R. Of course, you put one bracket here. So now, uh, this one can do it in several ways and all. Again, using a truth table method. If the truth values of this one exactly matches with the truth table, uh, truth values of this one under the main, uh, under the main logical connective, then these two are said to be logically identical to each other. For example, P and Q, and Q and P. You have P Q and P and Q and Q and P. So you have two variables. That's why you write two T's and two F, alternative T and alternative F. And this formula is going to be false. Uh, going to be true only in this case. In all other cases, it becomes false. Now, exactly Q and P also the same thing. So this formula Q and P is going to be true when both P Q are true. In all other cases, obviously, it becomes false. So now, according to the truth table, I mean, this exactly matches with the other one. Now, for example, when P and Q takes value t, even Q and P also takes a value t. So this matches with this, this matches with this, and this matches with this one. In that sense, P and Q and Q and P are logically identical to each other. So that is one way of showing it. The other way of showing it uh, is using uh, some other kind of thing. So that is this one. Suppose x is a formula and y is another formula. So when do we say that these two are logically identical to each other? These two are logically identical to each other, especially when x, if and only if y, is considered to be a tautology. If we can show that x if and only if y is a tautology then x and y are said to be identical to each other that is logically equivalent to each other. So now what we are trying to see here is this thing. So now we are trying to see whether this formula is logically equivalent to this or not. So now for that what we will be doing is we will be putting this particular kind of sign and then we are trying to see whether this formula is going to be a tautology or not. So now this is the formula which is there. So now the idea of semantic tablox method is simple that you know you start with the counter example first that means you negate the conclusion negation of x is this one not of the entire thing which you need to write. So P in place R is the first formula and then the second formula is this one P in place R. If the negation of this formula leads to the closure of branch and all that means negation of x is false that means x has to be t if x is t then obviously this is considered to be uh, valid and all. So now if x if and only if y is a tautology then obviously these two are said to be logically identical to each other. So now this you treat it as x and this as y so now you need to apply negation of uh, p in plus q so now you need to apply this particular kind of root beta rule. So this is this is x I mean p and q implies r the first one that is the x part and then not of p implies q implies r little bit uh, big and all here. So that is the first one x and not y and then not of p and q implies r that is not x and y y is same as this one brackets needs to be put properly now. So now 
we need to further simplify this thing then uh, it will be like this we need to expand this branch and all. So once you apply branching rule here so that is uh, this becomes not P and Q and then this becomes R so now this is over now this is the thing so now you further expand this thing it becomes not P not Q and this is as it is so now you apply a rule again here not of P plus Q plus R so this is so here what you need to do here is better to use non branching rule first so here we apply first rule for this one so this is P and not of Q implies R so now we apply rule for this one first so always the strategy is is that first you open up a formula which leads to non branching kind of formula and all so first you expand this one rather this one so now this becomes this so now this further reduces to Q and not R because not of Q plus R is Q not R so now you apply this one here so this is not of P and Q and then R so now you see here R and not R is there this branch closes so now this further uh, expands to not P and not Q so now you have P here and all the way down here you have not P this branch closes and you have not Q here and Q here this branch also closes so the left hand side all the branches closes in all so now you have to see the right hand side of this one so now first you open uh, a formula which leads to some kind of non branching non branching rule is the one which you need to apply first so this is x and this is y so that is why uh, uh, not of uh, this one leads to non branching kind of rule so that is P and Q and then not R so this is the formula which we have used here uh, this is the one not of P in plus Q is P and not Q so not Q instead of not Q you have R here so now this is over so now we apply branching rules it does not matter uh, so now this is not P and Q implies R so now P and Q uh, this P and Q can be written as P and not Q P and Q one after another this is the rule which we use P and Q means you can write P Q as a trunk this reflects the trunk now. so now you have P here and you are not P here this closes now you expand it further this becomes not Q and R now you have not R here and R here this closes and Q here this is hidden here Q here and not Q here, this also closes so now none of the branches remains open so that leads to negation of the given well formed formula leads to the closure of the branch that means what we have showed is this particular kind of thing not of X is false that means X is a tautology so that means these two P and Q implies R and P implies Q implies R are said to be logically identical to each other so we have established that uh, actually this is the thing which we need to use the mistake here so by imply like this so in this way you can show that uh, two given logical formulas well formed formulas are said to be uh, logically equivalent to each other or the other way of showing it is is that uh, how do we show that a given well formed formula is a tautology especially when you deny the well formed formula that means negate the well formed formula if all the branches closes then that means negation of the given formula x is false that is a contradiction that means x has to be a tautology so these are some of the things one can do with the help of uh, semantic tablax method so you can show that a given formula is a tautology you can show that two groups of statements are consistent to each other are satisfiable or you can even show that two given logical formulas are consist, uh, equivalent to each other etc all these things are considered to be some kind of decision procedure methods so the advantage of this uh, semantic tablax method is, is that it conducts a direct search for models 
the modals in a sense that whenever you find a open branch that is considered to be a modal that means under these particular kind of assignments a given formula is going to be true for example P and Q is going to be true especially when both are uh, both P and Q are going to be true in all other cases is going to be false so that means when you assign truth values P T Q T and that will serve as a uh, come some kind of model all the open paths of the tree that you are seeing in this all this example corresponding to satisfiability of, of conjunctions of formulas at the node suppose if all the branches closes then it means unsatisfiability so now traditional approaches such as constructing truth table etc it can take 2 to the power of n steps for any given uh, n for example n stands for some number of variables that exist in a given formula if n is too uh, big and all that means large the truth table method is difficult for us to handle because the number of propositional variables are large if it is more than 6 it becomes 64 entries are the entries you need to inspect to find out whether a whether a given well formed formula is valid or not. So these are some of the definitions that we will be following we are just discussed in a very informal way about this particular kind of method there are some definitions which we will be following while constructing the truth this method semantic tablox method. So the first definition is about the path a path of a tree in any stage of construction wherever on the left hand side you will see a tree diagram for this particular kind of thing. So a path of a tree is a complete column of formulas from top to the bottom of the tree and all for example in this case so this is considered to be one path and this is one path and is going like this and ending like this this is path number one and there is one more path exactly the same thing and is going like this and it ends here another path two. that means it starts all the way from the root and ends with some kind of atomic prepositions so that is how that is considered to be the path which already we have discussed in somewhere or other but you know we are discussing in explicitly what we mean by path of a tree so this is what is considered to be path definition of a finished path that means the path is uh, there is no way in which you can progress further that means when there is a conflicting information there is no way in which you can go further why we are not able to go further because uh, whenever you have an inconsistent information you can derive anything so that is the reason why we want to avoid this conflicting kind of information so this is the way in which one can show that uh, suppose if you have a conflicting information like this p and not p to begin with you have a con conflicting information like this it is raining and it is not raining so now you just state these things like this only p and not p so now fourth one uh, not p r this is one simplification and one simplification you will get this one so now you can safely add another kind of proposition without disturbing the truth value of this one if suppose you assume that not p is already true then whatever you add after this one q is always going to be true and all because of the semantics is like this that when this is obviously true irrespective of whether it is q is t q is false this is going to be true only that means p r q and p r q so obviously so this this becomes false only in this case in all other cases it becomes t f t f in all other cases is going to be true so whatever you add after this one this formula you retain the same thing in all it is also going to be true so that is why you can safely add any kind of strange kind of propositions uh, suppose if, we, if P stands for it is not raining you can safely add another kind of proposition that fix picks flies you know that is a strange thing about this particular kind of thing so now what we are trying to show is, is that whenever you have conflicting information you can derive anything so this is what is called as law of addition this is a truth preserving kind of law which I which you commonly see in, in logic one of the important laws of logic so that means you have P and you can easily you can safely add P R Q without disturbing the truth value of this one so now quickly what you can see is 3 and 4 
sorry a 2 and 4 disjunctive syllogism will lead to Q. So that is the reason why we are not going further and then uh, whenever you have a conflicting information we stop but in the same way so we have proved Q is the case Q is any kind of strange kind of proposition which uh, which is which comes as a consequence of this conflicting kind of information exactly in the same way you follow some other kind of steps you can even prove not Q also or maybe some other kind of proposition you know. So that means if you start with the contradictions inconsistencies etc you can derive anything. So that is the reason why whenever you have come across a closed branch you, know, you will stop there itself. So a path is considered to be finished if it is uh, if the only unchecked formula it contains are only propositional variables and that means there is no way in which you can go beyond it or the negation of the propositional variables. So that no more rules can apply on this one no more alpha beta rules can apply on that one. So that means a tree is said to be closed or finished if all of its paths are closed and an open path is a path that has no that has been marked with X and a closed path the mark with the tick mark and the closed path is marked with some kind of cross okay. In this class we just introduced the semantic tableaux method as one of the important decision procedure method and we have seen with some examples that how the semantic tableaux method can be used to decide you know whether a given well formed formula is a tautology suppose if you can show that the given well formed formula is a tautology obviously the formula is going to be valid or you can even show that when two groups of statements are consistent to each other uh, that that is what you can show and then you can also show with the help of semantic tableaux method it is a constructive method that uh, when two given logical formulas or propositional well formed formulas are going to be logically equivalent to each other. So what we will be doing in the next class is, is that we will be applying this semantic tableaux method particularly in solving some of the uh, important logical puzzles as well as you know once we translate the English language sentence in appropriately into the language of propositional logic then we can see whether uh, a conclusion follows from the premises or not again by using the semantic tableaux method. The semantic tableaux method has an edge over the truth table method especially in the sense that when the number of variables are more than 4 or 5 semantic tableaux method is easy to use uh, so that is why it has an edge over the, uh, the truth table method. So it depends upon our convenience which method we will be uh, using in the next class we will be seeing some of the uh, important logical puzzles interesting logical puzzles uh, that can be solved with the help of this semantic tableaux method.